we're going to talk about how Congress is dealing with uh, the economic crisis because there has been a lot of news, a lot of updates, a lot of changing things um, that has come through in terms of how Congress is handling um, dealing with the economic crisis that this uh, this this global pandemic has uh, has come about. So a lot of what I'm seeing and and because again the pace of the news moves so darn quick it moves so quickly that people kind of start forgetting what happened maybe a day ago maybe two days ago right um that's sort of the way that uh, uh that this stuff works um and right now what's happening is there's a lot of playing partisan politics right if one party does something the other party has to do the opposite of it so we saw this uh, like immediately, like immediately uh, when Trump said that he was just going to give sh checks straight to the American people. Right. Basically, his thing was, if you are an American citizen, you are going to get money. That's how they did it. And then the uh, the Dems came out and they were like, no, that's not what we need to do. What we need to do are give small business loans so that people can uh, pay their employees through these loans. And then they'll pay us back. And it was like, I don't know if that's what you need in a, in a, in a financial crisis where you're the entire economy, the real economy, not the economy that rich people run. The real economy is basically come to a standstill. Right. Uh, and what do I mean by the real economy? Stuff that we do every day, stuff that average working class Americans go do every day. And and that's, you know, supporting your local mom and pop shop, supporting your local restaurants and businesses, going out to see live shows, live events, you know, taking part in educational services and child care services, uh, making sure that your regular life is taken care of. Right. So if you have if you're somebody that uh, was able to afford a dog walker and now kind of has to look at that as a as an expense that you can't afford anymore. Now, not only can't you, you know, now you have to handle walking your dog, but the person that was kind of um, needed that income because you were paying them to walk your dog. The, the way that we kind of ran the economy of helping each other out, that's come to a complete halt and a standstill based on what we need to do in order to move past this pandemic, in order to figure out. Um, you know, what, who has it, who doesn't, how are we quarantining ourselves? How can we, so, so the Dems essentially blocked it with these loans that didn't make any goddamn sense. Like Chuck Schumer came out and said that last week that what we need to do is, and then expand unemployment, right? So like, like people, uh, can, like more and more people are going into unemployment. Like they're just getting unemployed or, or they're trying to get unemployment at this point because they are unemployed right like uh, but people in the service industry the entertainment industry a lot of people that are in part of the gig economy uh, we've talked about this over and over again because it still remains to be a lingering reality and a lingering anxiety amongst average working class people because that's that's the elephant in the room it's it's what we're it's what we're um, uh, constantly worried about in our society right now. So, so they went to the loans and then, and then so the Republicans went to the loans and Mnuchin and everybody, they, they, they switched a lot of the language that they were talking. And now the Democrats are back blocking those measures by saying, well, it's not good enough. It's not helping the American worker enough. Right. And, and that's what they're doing. They're playing this, they're playing this back and forth game constantly with us so like the news constantly keeps changing and we were we, you're like wait what wasn't this not the thing you said yesterday what what's happening like you just kind of freak out because because that's what they're doing they're they're going back and forth they're they're just you know they're kind of making it up as they go along is what they're doing um they're 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 saying even the even the stimulus package that like the Republicans changed their tune from sending checks directly to Americans to uh, essentially basing it off of a 2018 tax filing. Um, so if you were too poor to pay taxes or file taxes, uh, then you just don't get anything or or you get 600 bucks or something like that. 
And it's and it's like the people those are the people that need it the most. The ones that just don't make enough money to contribute. Like there's a ton of people that do that. A ton of people can't pay their taxes because they just didn't make enough money to do it. You know, and and how are we going to help those people? You know, giving them the least amount of money um, because they were they were too uh, underrepresented to fall into this tax bracket shit. Uh, so now that's come into play too. Is how do we take care of people that you know aren't part of the tax system? You know, that's that's come into a question. How do we do that? And those are the people that need it the most, and we're giving them the least. Um, so that's, that's how the Republicans kind of reshaped it once all this talk about loans started coming about. And now it's like, once that came about, there was so much pushback about like, why are you trying to give us loans, but you just made up $1.5 trillion for Wall Street and $51 billion for the airline industry? Like, why are you, you know, and then it was like, there was all these corporate provisions and then the Democrats had to posture and be like, well, that's not what we, and, and you know, so now they came out and uh, this is this is like the Pelosi plan or whatever it's being called. Um, it's a tel- It's a 10 to 12 week program that would include $1,500 for individuals, $7,500 for a family of five. Once again, um, looking at this provision, doesn't say whether it's going to be uh, monthly dur- throughout the duration of this thing or just a one-time payment that you're going to get, right? And $1,500 for an individual is great. It, it would, uh, fuck, it would help me out a shit ton for sure. I'm not going to deny that. Um, but one, is it tax-free? Two, are we going to have to pay it back? Three, how, uh, what are you going to do if this thing goes longer than the next couple months? Like $1,500 maybe is enough to get us through a month, maybe two months, maybe, right? But like if you have zero income coming in, how are you supposed to make that shit work? You know, that's sort of the way um, that I'm looking at it is, is sure, $7,500 for a family of five sounds really great. But what about somebody, somebody that has more than a family of five? What about somebody that lives, you know, there are multi-generational homes Um, you know, what are you considering that there are some things that, you know, um, come into question, uh, this $500 billion in small business grants is what they're, what they're also proposing. Uh, yeah, I think it should be a grant. Why are you giving people loans? And, and again, all this is backtracking, right? Because Schumer and the Democrats last week wanted to give out small business loans, they were talking about loans last week, and now they're like, no, it has to be grants because we found out that people are r- real mad about paying shit back when they're not making any money. So maybe we should grants forget. No, no, no. I ignore last week. Ignore last week. You know, don't worry about who was paying me to say uh, loans. Oh, it was those banks that we bailed out. The banks were telling us that we need to, we can't just give money to the American people. It's got to be loans. You know, because we got to run in a debt economy, you guys. Okay, the debt is very important. If if we are not, uh, if if we are not indebted to the banks, then you know they might uh, disappear, and then we go back to a system where we all just take care of each other and and uh, and value each other for for who we are as people, and that's that is crazy. Oh my god. What would we do with ATMs? Hmm? Did you think about the ATM market when you were trying to value yourself as a person? Hmm? Probably weren't. It's selfish. Selfish. Valuing yourself as an individual, valuing your neighbors as individuals, and, and uh, cooperating and loving each other for our differences is selfish. And you are not thinking about the bankers. Uh, the Democrats are also proposing $150 billion to support hospitals uh, and eliminating uh, cost sharing for treatments. Um, so basically, they're advocating for free vaccines here, right? Which is some shit that we've been calling for since the very beginning of all this, right? Uh, free treatments, free vaccines, free testing. All this stuff should have been, that should have been uh, a day one provision. That should have been decided, signed, and done. Like March 
11th, people were kind of freaking out. March 12th, everybody freaked out. March 13th, we're going to do free testing and we're going to make sure that you have free vaccines. None of this cost sharing copay bullshit where that should have been done immediately. Right. And now they're bandwagoning. And I'm going to get into uh, the uh, why the bandwagoning is happening in just about a, in just in just a minute here. Um, you know, but I do want to talk about some of the more interesting things that are coming up uh, out of it. And all of it will if you if you know me, I'm going to bring it around full circle. I'm going to do my best to do that. Uh, child care assistance, uh, because now, you know, um, people are dealing with their kids. <laughs> Some Americans are like, yeah, I, I, I had a child and then I just didn't have to see it because I'd go to work and then I'd pick it up and put it to bed. And that's child rearing, right? I don't have kids. I'm, 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 being, I'm being a little facetious. I'm being a little facetious of the situation. Um, this I thought was interesting. And I was wondering, I'd be curious to see how they how they make this work is six hundred dollars a week for anyone that's unemployed, uh, especially independent contractors. I, I mean, I'd fall under that category, a bunch of comedians and a bunch of gig economy workers, people that can't drive for Lyft or do DoorDash or, or the, the shopping apps and stuff, you know, um, although I guess the shopping apps would be going up, they'd be increasing right now. Um, and I know some people are, um, are, are doing these, these shopping apps or, or they're, they're being hired by grocery stores to do the shopping themselves and then, um, deliver the, the stuff. Uh, I, yeah. Um, but you know, a lot of those guys are independent contractors and they don't make that much money. Uh, I know because I've tried it and it's, it's supplemental. Um, like I make, when I did it, I made a little bit of money to help supplement some, you know, some buffer income essentially, but that's really all it was. It wasn't like a source of any sort of, you know, major monetary change. Uh, it was just sort of a stopgap measure at best is sort of what it was. Um, so I'd be curious to see how they would implement something like 600 bucks a week for, uh, you know, displaced independent contractors that have uh, that have lost a major, major source of income, um, you know, in, in however it is. Uh, expand sick leave. Obviously, uh, every corporation should have been expanding sick leave. And look, if you're a corporation, your CEO, your CFO, your CTO, whoever's on that fucking executive board uh, is probably making a shit ton of money. Uh, I think uh, in, in like 2015 or 2016, like um, the McDonald's CEO was making 450 some odd times that of the minimum wage worker. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pre let's just let's just say I'll do the math on it. Right. I'll do the math on it. Um, you're making 725 an hour uh, and you work. Yeah, let's just be honest, you're not working full time. So let's let's say you're working 25 hours a week at 7.25 an hour. Uh, that's $181.25. I'll round up to say $182, right? And this is all before taxes per week. Uh, so 182 times 52 on a yearly basis. If you work 25 hours at a minimum wage job, you're making about 9,500 bucks. Okay, a little less than 9,500 bucks. So $9,500 times 450 is $4.3 billion. And you know they're not getting taxed on that shit. <laughs> $4.3 billion and you just go out and get to keep it. And if you expand paid sick leave, you might lose what? Half a billion? you still have $3.8 billion. Like, that's so much fucking money. It's so crazy. Yes, and it, I think we should be expanding sick leave. And if you're a fucking billionaire, 
you know, or a multimillionaire CEO of whatever, we just siphon that off of your income and you still have a shit ton of money. You're not hurting. You're not, you're, you're not struggling. You don't have to worry about what happens when this thing is over, right? Like, like when we get back to normalcy, like, am I going to be able to do all the things that I was doing before? Like, will I be able to afford, will I still be able to afford rent? Will, 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 am I out on the streets? You know, we're not really talking about moratoriums or anything right now. You're not worried about that as a CEO. Guarantee that shit. Okay, so then there's $4 million, at the, $4 billion, uh, sorry, $4 billion for elections. Um, uh, and I think that's just to pay people that are a part of the election program. Uh, again, very un unclear from the articles that I've read. Um, this is kind of cool. $20 billion for uh, the United States Postal Service for any lost revenue. And then they're forgiving the Postal Service debt. Uh, cool. Because, I mean, the mail's still coming in. You still got to pay those employees for sure. They're probably, a lot of them are probably working overtime. A lot of them are probably putting their, putting their lives at risk. People are freaking out right now. You know, so uh, be, be cool to your postal workers right now. Because they're they're still out there, they're still doing the job, they're still fucking fighting for shit. So, um, you know, uh, if if you're part of the American working class that's been displaced by all this, uh, you know, be good to your postal workers. If you know, don't 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 be rude. You know, if your dog's barking at your postal worker, you just chill that dog out. You kind of it's like you, you know, say put put that dog in the backyard for a little bit. Let let them work out that energy. You know, get get your postal worker a glass of water. Uh, you know, get get them get them maybe bake them a cookies. Bake, maybe bake them some cookies or something. You know, treat them nice. They're they're going through a hard time too. So uh, we talked about the partisan politics aspect of it, right? Um, why are they doing this? Why are they why are they flip flopping? Why are they going back and forth? Right? We we had this whole thing of emergency UBI that Tulsi Gabbard uh, talked about in uh, on March twelfth or thirteenth, something along there. Um, you had Bernie Sanders coming up with with the uh, with the plan. By the way, all of this stuff is uh, is basically what Bernie was talking about um, in his um, point by point plan that's available on his website. <laughs> So we're using, we're basically going to these outsider candidates that uh, all these corporate Democrats have like shit on for the last months, last like several months. They basically shit on them. Um, and, you know, we started with, with Tulsi and Bernie and, and basically using Andrew Yang's idea to come up with a plan um, of how we're going to take care of displaced workers and what we're going to do to ensure that once we come out of it, we can still have an economy uh, that functions without going into a major, major collapse, right? Uh, into a depression, not a recession, a depression. Um, you know, because that's where we'll, we'll head if we don't if if we don't help out people, that's where we're going to head to, right? But the reason why they keep going back and forth, you you had the you had the uh, the measures from these outsider candidates. And then you also had um, you had Trump and Mnuchin coming out and being like, we're just going to send you guys checks. To, well, checks are coming out and then the blocks from the Democrats and then the blocks from the Republicans and blocks from the Democrats. So they just kept it going back and forth. And, con and, and each time they did, it seemed like one side was conceding to the other side, right? Like they went from direct check. The Republicans went from direct check to loans after Schumer's talking about sending out small business loans. Um, because the banks that pay them uh, don't want to bail out the American people. They want to uh, bail themselves out. Uh, here's the deal, guys. It's an election year. I mean, they're still trying to do this election. Uh, and it is, a, it is an election year. So what they want is to figure out which party is going to get the credit. That's what they're looking at, right? Who is going to get the credit to come out and say, that they saved the American people and henceforth the American people owe the party. That's what they're trying to do. They, they want people to come out and say they, that, that uh, you owe us as either Republicans or Democrats for saving your ass. 
we did it. We did that. Hey, we did it. Who gave you guys all that money? Huh? Was it was it was it the Republicans or the Democrats? We we don't know who fought for it. Who fought for it? Was it Mama Pelosi or M- Mama Schumer? Mama Mitch? We fought for it, baby. That's what we did because we're good Democrats. We're good Republicans. That's what they're trying to do. But this is all shit that outsider political candidates have already called for. I I, I don't give a shit what your personal opinions of Andrew Yang, Tulsi Gabbard, or Bernie Sanders is, but essentially without ideas that they, they have put on the table, we would have never gotten to this point where this is even being discussed. And guess what? Right now, it's... Mitch McConnell, uh, Schumer, and Nancy Pelosi that are going into some fucking smoke-filled room with their cigars and, and, and their fucking eyes wide shut party, and they're making decisions for the American people without actually being a part of the American people. They're not part of the American people. We are not at that negotiating table. The workers are not part of the negotiating table. The working class is not part of the negotiating table. It's a bunch of rich elites making rules to to pretend to save us. And none of this stuff is going to be implemented after uh, all this shit is done. Bernie, Tulsi, and Yang had a plan for all this. Right. Like the UBI thing of like why we need it was all that was popularized by uh, Andrew Yang. Then you have Bernie Sanders, who's basically itemized what we need to do and how we need to go about doing it. Uh, An emergency UBI was put into place like the day after everything went uh, to DEFCON 5, like when everybody's freaking out. The day fucking after, man. In 1944, FDR proposed something called an Economic Bill of Rights, okay? Uh, Democrat, Democrat, F- FDR, Economic Bill of Rights, which included useful jobs, uh, useful and rem- remunerative jobs. I probably butchered that word, but the key is he wanted useful jobs. That was our right. Our right to have jobs with meaning and purpose behind it. Uh, that was our right, okay? Uh, what else? Uh, the right to earn enough to provide adequate food, clothing, and recreation. You think $15 an hour is, is going to do that right now? Doubtful. I think that needs to go way up. That means th- th- it, what, what's being advocated for here um, is a living wage is what he's talking about. A living wage. And, you know, you can have a federal living wage if you had... Um, I think I think a federal living wage should be above 20 bucks an hour at this point. But really, it's very difficult to make this argument of a federal living wage um, because just in terms of property prices alone, it's all different everywhere you go, right? If your living wage is, is let's say it's 22 bucks an, an hour is the living wage, right? Uh, we'll do math again. We're, this is a very math-centric episode. <laughs> uh, $22 an hour times 40 hours in a week is $880 per week. That's, that's without uh, with, uh, you know, pre-taxes. On a yearly basis, that's about $45,760. Uh, so if you say that a livable wage is $46,000 a year, um, or $22 an hour, then that means that everything has to be set um, within those parameters. And what do I mean by that? That means that somebody making $46,000 a year in San Francisco is not living um, with the with the the right to earn enough to provide adequate food, clothing, or recreation, compared to somebody in Billings, Montana. Billings, Montana. I mean, forty six thousand dollars. You might as well you might as well be the king of Billings, Montana, maybe, right? You know, uh, but in San Francisco, you have just enough uh, just enough money um, to uh, uh, purchase a box. 
to live on, uh, on, on, on the corner of a street in Mission. The, you know, that's, that's what you can afford with $46,000. So what would that mean is if you federalize the minimum wage with this, with the right to earn enough to provide adequate food, clothing, and recreation, as FDR suggested, that would mean that you would have a centralized um, focal point of what you can and can't charge for properties. That includes rent and mortgage, right? So you would your property cannot go above a certain amount uh, based on this federal living wage. That means that a person that's making forty six thousand dollars should have enough money to 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 be able to pay their rent, their utilities, buy food, uh, and have some recreational money, and have some money to spend, um, or or to save rather. Uh, this is nineteen forty four. This guy's calling for it. So so it really it it puts a restriction on how much money you can make, right? So, so that, you know, you can have a conversation surrounding that. Uh, here's more from the Economic Bill of Rights. Uh, the right to a decent home, the right to adequate health care, the right to education. All of this stuff um, is 1944 and uh, is considered far left ideologies right now. Um, human rights is considered a far left extreme ideology. Just think about that for a minute. If you advocate for human rights um, in any other terms outside economics, it's fine. Everybody says it's cool. You know, that's what we should do. That's what we need. You know, we should treat people better. And we should do. And then once you start bringing in economics into it and say that there is an economic component to achieving human rights, um, that's when people are like, well, this is an extreme ideology. This is, you know, veering into socialism. It's veering into these very dangerous territories. But what we have in the Economic Bill of Rights is the basis for universal basic income. This is where we start. The ground floor is, uh, you know, useful jobs, uh, the right to make enough money for food and for um, you know, for, for all of these things, um, that, uh, that, that is, that is very, very important, uh, that, you know, we need to live, we need health care, we need the right to an education, we need right to decent homes. That's your starting point right there for UBI. And we have the ways to make that stuff happen, right? We have the technological advancements that we can make. Uh, to make that sort of stuff happen. We can make UBI happen soon. We can take stock of what is what is available, the data that is available right now. Um, you know, and we can make a lot of technological strides. Automation is coming. We can do all that stuff. But what is the point of technological advancement if there isn't progressive foundations behind it? If the progressive ideas are not the foundation of technological advancements to make our lives better, then what good does it do? Now, Democrats in the 60s abandoned a lot of these ideas, um, like especially like universal health care. They abandoned universal health care in the 60s uh, because they saw it wasn't necessary. You know, things were going really well. So let's get rid of this thing and switch it over and, and you know, like prop up uh prop up corporations prop up these uh these other systems in place and and that fucking couldn't be further from the truth right like just because things are going well doesn't mean you have to get rid of the systems that got us to the point where things are going well how stupid is that idea <laughs> it's it's a complete lack of foresight is really what it is right um, because if we implement something during a crisis, uh, if we implement something during a really tough time that we're going through and it works and it pulls us out of that tough time, why not adapt it a little bit to keep what's in place so that when you go back through a tough time, you don't have to 
go into this emergency survival mode. If it works during a crisis, it's going to work at normal times too. And see, that's why the Democrats and the Republicans are so afraid to try some of these ideas uh, like universal health care, like universal basic income, like universal education, because if it works in a crisis, then it's going to work all the time. And people are, people are going to be uh, upset when, when it doesn't, when, when it's not implemented, to be like, hey, what, the fuck, what are you talking about? It worked. It worked. We saw it working. Why would you take it away when it was working? What we can't say now is is that capitalism is working because uh, it's not. Unfettered, unregulated, freedom capitalism is not fucking working. The American capitalist system and American hubris might be the cause of uh, human extinction. <laughs> that just that, <laughs> that just might happen. <laughs> like us pounding our chest to like take credit for who saves humanity when it's just like no one gives a shit who saves just somebody fucking do it we're, we're doing everything that we can here you know on the ground level of of being nice to each other and compassionate understanding you know talking to each other checking in on each other i have friends and that that i check in on and people that check in on me and it's very you know and we'll talk for a little bit like all of that stuff is great and it's amazing and we're doing that on the ground floor, but at an at an eventual point, like we're gonna need field hospitals. We're gonna need some centralized versions of, um, you know, how to deal with this thing. These economic bill of rights um, that FDR proposed. We have never come close to achieving any of them. Really haven't. Um, they were they were laughed at in the forties. I mean, these are sixty plus year idea, sixty plus year old ideas. You know, and um, uh, even FDR was kind of laughed at, and there was a lot of pushback towards him um, in all of this. And we never came close to achieving what FDR was talking about. And now we have an opportunity. Um, to do that because we need a fundamental shift and the reason why we haven't had and op- why we haven't done that is the democrats and the republicans are both the party of money and that's all they are nancy pelosi is part of the party of money chuck schumer is part of the fa- uh, uh, party of money mitch mcconnell they're all parts of that's why i'm saying that nobody we're, we're not they're not advocating for workers, they're looking to make sure that they keep getting rich. Don't forget that the Democrats were advocating for the same small business loans that the Republicans are advocating for now. It's it, it's just they're beating their chests to be like, look at me, I'm the one. I'm the savior. I'm the golden god. I, I am. Uh, Americans need to worship me. Fear and profit is what they're all driven by. They're all driven by fear and profit. And it's evident in the way that they keep going back and forth instead of just saying, yeah, emergency UBI. Let's start with $1,000. Let's make that happen. Let's put that initiative into play. If you're an American citizen, we're sending you a check for $1,000. No question of where this money is going to come from because we didn't ask that question when the banks were getting bailed out. Uh, 60 plus years ago, there was a guy that, uh, advocated for an economic bill of rights. Uh, guess what? I think it's about damn time that we, that we start putting one into place that, that we look at what FDR proposed as an economic bill of rights and put that into place. Uh, and this, this, this bill, the way that they're proposing it now, um, I mean, this is stuff we should have, I mean, I'm glad we're talking about it now, but this is stuff that should have been in place a long time ago, a long time ago, you know? It's so interesting that that ideas that I've, you know, I'm going to use myself as an example here, is these ideas I've, I've talked about for a long time, um, 
you know, and I'm not the only one. Uh, prog other progressives, other other activist minded folks have been talking about universal basic income and uh, health care, education, uh, making them public uh, utilities, talking about pub making, you know, the Internet as a, as a public utility and, and things of that sort is, um, you know, these ideas were laughed at. People people would make fun of me for believing this sort of stuff. And in the time of a crisis, they're like, that's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. We got to do all those socialist things. <laughs> so it's very interesting to kind of see that. Uh, so, you know, I hope uh, I hope that this, this chess beating, this uh, partisan play, this I need credit for saving the uh, saving the American worker, all that bullshit. All that ego-driven nonsense gets put over to the side, and we do uh, we do what FDR was talking about, and we put into place some progressive ideas that were introduced over sixty motherfucking years ago, because it's about damn time. Hi everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I really really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to be making daily videos, so make sure you come back to this channel. Make sure that you are subscribed. You hit that bell so you're getting the notifications uh, because we are going to be putting up videos every single day, uh, keeping you guys updated on what's going on around the world, keeping our critical thinking skills uh, up to date as well, uh, talking about some interesting ideas, talking about some topics that you won't hear on your corporate mainstream outlets. Um, I'm also a touring stand-up comedian, uh, but uh, at the moment, I don't have any live stand-up comedy dates to tell you guys about. So uh, if you have the means to and would like to, to, to donate to this channel, to donate to um, creating videos to improve the quality and quantity of these videos, feel free by, do, uh, by going to ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate that's r-a-m-a-n noodlescomedy.com slash donate there you will find various different ways that you can either become a sustaining member uh, via those big orange buttons patreon bandcamp and even paypal uh, or by just making a one-time donation uh, via the aforementioned paypal venmo cash app uh, whatever you feel most comfortable doing, and that's if you have the means to do it. I understand that we're all struggling through this time, uh, so all of these videos are going to be available for free, and like I said, will be up every single day. And a huge way that you can help uh, is by sharing these out. Uh, hit it, hit it up on your social feeds, on on the on the Twitters and the and the alternative social feeds and the Instagrams and the Facebooks. Just share it around. Tell it. Tell as many people as you possibly can, uh, especially if you enjoy uh, the topics that we are discussing on this channel. And once again, make sure that you are subscribed. You hit that like button um, and get uh, get new eyes on this channel. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I, I, and everybody that's already become a sustaining member or a patron um, or has donated, uh, thank you so much. It really, really means a lot, and it helps. Every little tiny bit helps in, uh, in, 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 the, in this time of, of need. So uh, be good to each other. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you tomorrow with new videos.